Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design, looking at data manipulation instructions. And in this video, we're going to look at the logic instructions provided by the MSP430. And more importantly, we're going to look at the use of some of these operations to perform what we call bit masking. Okay, and that's a very common thing that you do in computers. Okay, so the MSP430 provides four mnemonics for logic operations. So two of them, it, it turns out some of them are emulated instructions, but we don't, really don't care. It, it provides an invert, so INV is the mnemonic, and this basically complements every bit in the destination. Uh, it provides an AND operation, with the mnemonic is AND, as you'd suspect. It provides an OR, the mnemonic is OR, and it provides an exclusive OR, which is, <clears throat> XOR. Okay. All right. So this is uh, this is pretty self-explanatory what they do, but they're bitwise operations. That's really important. So what bitwise means is if you had an eight-bit, let's say a sixteen-bit source and a sixteen-bit destination, and you or them, you did like an OR, it would OR each of the individual bits together. So bit or position zero, ORed with position zero. Okay, position one ordered with position one, position seven ordered with position seven. And then the results go back into the destination in that same position. Okay, so let's take a look at how you do these. So we'll kind of build up a, a Code Composer project as we go. So why don't you go ahead and fire up Code Composer and we'll start a new project for this. And then as we look through each instruction, we'll go ahead and just code it up. Okay, so I got my MSP430 Launchpad plugged in. I've got Code Composer. And go ahead and start up a new project, new CCS project. My MCU is correct. I'm going to call this one ASM underscore. We're still doing ALU or data manipulation instructions. Now let's do logic on this one. And we'll just do one project since these are relatively simple for all, the, all of the logic instructions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that. All right. Let's look at the invert first. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so here it comes, and I'm gonna come down here into my main loop, and I'll go ahead and give myself a little bit of space, and let's go ahead and put our main address label, and then we'll do jump main, and that'll give us our infinite loop, and then we can test out the invert. Okay, it shouldn't be terrible. So here we go. I'm gonna come over here, and let's invert something. Uh, let's let's do 8-bit operations just so that we can do everything in binary and it, it's not a ton of zeros and ones. So let's go move up B and let's put a value in a register. So let's do like pound and let's enter it in binary so we can see bitwise. Uh, let's do 10101010 binary and then let's put that in R4 and then let's just invert it. Okay. And we just invert has one uh, operand. Okay, so that's it. So let's fire up the debugger and we'll take a look at what's happening. Okay, so I firing this up. It's going to download it. First time will take a second and then it'll go quicker as we go. And it's working, it's working. It's waking up the MCU for the day. There we are. Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's do what we usually do. Let's go move the put a breakpoint before the first instruction, and we'll go ahead and run to that breakpoint. And then I want to look at R four, but I want to look at it in binary. Uh, and so here we go. So we can see everything right there. There's our eight bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is step it, and I put one zero one zero one zero one zero into it. And now I'm going to invert the whole thing. Okay, so now, and I'm gonna invert bitwise or bytewise. So go ahead and step it. Now look what happened. Notice that I only inverted the bottom eight bits of it. Okay, and that's because I did a dot B. If I would have done a dot W, it would have inverted all these upper bits uh, that were zeros into ones. Okay, so that's the invert. Not terrible. Uh, now let's take a look at the next instruction, which is the and. This one again is not terribly difficult, but what we really do, so, you know, sometimes you do take two inputs and AND them together, but most of the time what you do with an AND operation is you do this, this concept of that's called bit masking. And it's a technique where you take a constant uh, word 
and you can either set, clear, or toggle, or even test the value of bit or bits within the destination, okay? And so let's, let's look at how we can use this. Uh, we're gonna start looking at the AND operation. So remember the old two input AND gate, okay? It's truth table is, you know, zero, zero is a zero. zero. Zero AND with one is a zero. One AND with zero is a zero. One AND with one is a one. So that is the truth table from this, uh, from back in the day. And take a look at this though. Notice that if you anded anything with a zero, <clears throat> whether you and a zero with a zero or a one with a zero, the output is always a zero. So we can use that, uh, that attribute of an and to clear bits within a destination, okay? We just have to and the bits with a zero. But what's really nice about this is check out this. If we and anything with a one, you get the same result. So for example, if I took this zero right here and I ended it with a one, the result is a zero. But if I took a one and ended it with a one, the result is a one. So if I look at these two values in column B, they are both anded with a one and they result in the same value. So if you and anything with a one, it has no impact on the actual result, okay? So now this allows us to start looking at this concept of a bit mask. A mask is a set of bits that indicate which bits within a destination are going to be altered, and the mask will dictate or it will tell you which bits are gonna be altered depending on the ones and zeros in the mask. Now whether the one, rep whatever the ones and zeros in the mask represent depends on the operation. Okay, so it's going to be different if we're using uh, ORs for a mask, or ORs for a mask, or ANDs for a mask, but we're still looking at the AND right now. So consider this, if I created a mask, <clears throat> any position within the mask that contains a zero will result in the corresponding bit in the destination to be cleared. So if my, and then if I took that same mask and, and any position within it that contains a one will simply leave the original value within the destination the same. So consider this mask right here. I've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. If I anded anything with this, I would clear the top two bits of the destination and I would leave all the other bits the same. Let's take a look at what this would look like if I broke this out. So here's my, here's my mask. I've got my 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And I have a destination which is one 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 zero 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 zero. It doesn't matter what it is. This is just an example. Okay, the result of this will be you will clear these two values. Okay, the bit position six and seven. No matter what, you will clear these. Okay, and then all of the rest of the six bits within the destination will be left the same. Okay. So you're going to have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Check it out. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Those do not change. Okay. So that's how you use this. Let's go back into Code Composer and let's fire this up. So let's, let's do this example where let's move dot B. And I want to put that example that we were doing. I want to put, uh, let's see, I can probably move this right here and then we'll put this over there. Okay, so that's what we want to be doing. So let's do one 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 zero 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 binary into R5, since we're not using that. And now I want to do this. I'm going to go and.b, and I'm going to do immediate addressing. Notice I'm using immediate addressing here to put a constant into there. I'm going to use immediate addressing in the and operation, which is perfectly legal for the source, and I'm going to put a bit mask. And I'm going to put zero zero one 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 binary. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then I am going to and R5. So this will conduct this and operation. Now the result of this is going to go into R5, but this is going to clear bits 6 and 7. Okay, so this is what this operation is going to do. Actually, it would be better to put the comment there. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire this up and see what happens. In this situation, I want to look at R five and see if this mask actually works. Okay. All right. So I'm firing up, firing up, firing up. Come down here. I've got my instruction. Okay. I don't need memory browser for this. I'm going to remove this uh, breakpoint and I'm going to move it down to here and I'll run to that breakpoint. So now I'm only going to be looking at this. Now let's pull up R5. We need uh, 
We're gonna need a little bit of room to see it in binary. So let's take R5, number format, binary, and I'm gonna scroll, okay, so you can see it right there. So here we go, I'm gonna load something in there, boom, and I got the original number, 11110000. Now I'm gonna end it with this mask, 00111111, and I'm gonna clear the top two bits right here. So check out what happens when I step, boom, I did it. Look at that, I cleared those two, everything else stayed the same. So that's one of the most popular uses of an and with bit masking is to clear bits out, okay? So that's that, all right. You can do one more thing with an and operation. Uh, this one's a tiny bit more complex, but you can actually check the value of a particular bit within the, the uh, destination. And the way you do it is you basically create a mask and you're gonna and it. And what happens is that Anywhere in your mask that has a one in the is where you care about wh what bit in the destination you're looking at, okay? And a zero represents that you don't care about what the values of those positions are. And then what you do is you look at the Z flag after the AND operation, okay? So that's what's gonna happen is, is if you had Z is equal to one, for example, think about this. All the zeros in the mask will result in a zero, okay? So you don't care about them and they are not gonna impact the final destination, okay? But then the position of interest, if it was a zero, it would be anded with a one from the mask and the result would be a zero. So then the, not only is the position of interest a zero, but the entire destination is zero and the Z flag will be asserted. And then you would know that the, since the Z flag was asserted, the position of interest was a zero. Similarly, if you said the position of interest was a one in the destination, when you ended it with a one, the result would be a one. All the other zero positions in the mask would have resulted in a zero, in a zero but the destination in that position would have been a one. No matter where it is in the final destination word, it just matters that it's not equal to zero. So you can still use the Z flag to say, no, that was not a zero, okay? So let's take a look at uh, how that might look. So let's do this. Here's two examples. You have a number, uh, a destination, 00010000, and you're gonna ask a question. Is bit seven of the destination a one or a zero? So you're looking at this position right here, and I wanna know if it's a one or a zero. We can see that it's a zero, but, I'm going to do this by taking a mask that says I care about position seven and all the rest of them I don't care about. When I perform that and operation, all the lower six bits or seven bits are going to be cleared. And what I really care about is the seventh position. Is this a zero or a one? Well, it since the destination was a zero here, when I ended it with a one, I got a zero here. And notice that the Z flag was asserted. That means is bit seven of the destination a one or a zero? I can say that it was a zero because when I ended it with this mask, the Z flag was asserted. So I can actually tell what the value is. Now, where, where would you care about this? This is like when you're reading from an input, something on a port, and you don't know what's coming in and you just wanna see whether it's a one or a zero. Let's take a look at the complement of that or the dual of that. Let's say that you had that same destination, 0001000. And your question now is, is bit four of the destination a one or a zero? So your mask is created by saying zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. You, the one represents where you care, the bit position of interest. So this mask is saying, I care. I'm trying to test bit four of the destination. And so all the other positions you don't care about. So you go ahead and do the, the and, and the result comes out to be zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. You don't care about any of these zeros. What you care about is the position four of the, of the result is a one. And that means this entire word is not zero. So the Z flag will be zero. So I can say from this question, is bit four of the destination a one or a zero? I can come down here and say, Z was equal to zero as a result of this and with a mask. So that means bit four was a one. It was a one. 
Okay, so let's go look at that really quick. That's this is pretty sweet. <laughs> so we're gonna go over here, and I'm gonna do this. Let's go move that B. Let's go pound. I'll go ahead and stop my my session. Okay, so boom, boom. Here we are. So I'm gonna go uh, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero B, and let's put that into our six. Okay, and here's the question: Is bit uh, Let's see, is bit seven a one or zero? That's my question, okay? And I know that I know the answer because I'm using this, <laughs> this value right here. So I'm gonna go along, I'm gonna say zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. I wanna make sure I have enough. One, two, three, four, okay, cool, cool. All right, so here's, here's the, oops, here's the example that I'm doing right here. I'm doing this one right here. So I'm gonna do, okay, so here's what my and, mask will look like. I'm going to and b, and I'm going to use a mask that says, is bit seven a one or a zero? So my mask is going to be one, zero, 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 binary. <clears throat> that means my mask says, I care, I am going to test position seven of the destination. And I am going to provide the destination as our six. And then what I will do is put the result back in our six. But what I'm really caring about is the Z flag, okay? Let's go ahead and code the other one up, the other example right here, and we'll we'll do these both in one uh, one debug session. So let's do this. I'm gonna put that same destination into, let's go R7 this time. And the question we're asking is, is bit four a one or zero? And so in order to test that, I'm gonna go and dot B, and I'm gonna create a mass that has 0, 0, 0, 1, position 4 will be the 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I don't care about any of the other positions, and I'm going to test what's in R7, and I'll put the result back in R7. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and save that up, and let's fire that up. And remember, what we're going to do is look at the 0 flag. Okay, so the 0 flag is what we actually care about on, after those operations. Okay. All right, so... We're up and running. Uh, let's go down here and let's go ahead and move our breakpoint down. So we'll jump, we'll blow through those first two right there. And we're going to look at these two operations. So I'm going to come along and I got my new breakpoint. I'm going to run to this. And now what I'm looking at is I'm, I want to look at R6 and R7. Actually, I want to look at R6 and R7 in the Z flag. So let's change these to number format. I want to do binary. And scroll over here. And I, I care about that Z flag, so I want to see that on the screen. I want it to change. Hopefully the screen is big enough. I'm going to come up here, and I need to find the Z, so it's in the status register. So I expand that. Luckily, Z is kind of toward the bottom of that, so I can see my Z, and I can see 6 and 7. Okay, so I can see it all. Great. So I've got 6 and 7, and I've got my Z on there. Okay, and here's their values. 6 and 7, we don't know what's in them. So let's go ahead and do our first step. Okay, and so now I've loaded it up with our test with our test destination, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And I am now going to test whether bit position 7 is a 1 or a 0. So I and it with this mask, and look at what happens. The result that goes back into 6 is all zeros. The Z flag was asserted, and the answer to my question was, no, bit 7 was a 0. Well, I guess I didn't ask you yes or no. <laughs> I said, what's the value of bit seven in the destination? And the answer was, I looked at the Z and I said, hey, it's a zero. I'm like, all right. Now let's do uh, the complement case, which is where you're going to test whether a, a bit is a one or a zero and the result is a one. So now here we go. I'm going to do these two. So move dot B, and this is going to be... Zero, 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 0001 zero, 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 zero. that just happens to be our test destination so I'll go ahead and load that up so here we are and now I'm going to test whether bit position 4 is a 1 or a 0 and I'm going to watch the z flag boom check it out the result of the and operation in bit position 4 was a 1 okay but more importantly that made the entire word not zero all the other positions were cleared out because an and they were anded with the zeros in the mass that means the whole value is not zero. Z was equal to a zero. That told me that bit for the destination was indeed a one. Okay, that is awesome. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one.
All right, let's take a look at another one we can use, which is the OR. All right, remember the OR gate, so the output of the truth table is 0, 1, 1, 1. Notice this, though. If you OR anything with a 1, the output is a 1, no matter what. So the, whether it's a 0 or a 1, the output's a 1. That is the same thing as a set. Okay, so you're setting the bit. Notice, though, what makes it nice is that if you OR anything with a 0, the result is not impacted. So if it was a zero, the result's a zero. If it was a zero, the, or it was a one, the result's a one. That's nice because you can use that to set bits using a bit mask and an OR gate. And the way that it works is any bit that you would like to set in the destination, you put a one in the mask. So in this mask, I would be setting bit position zero, one, two, three, and four. And then any position in the mask or in the destination you wanna leave alone, you would put a zero in the mask. So in these, in this example, bit positions five, six, and seven would be left alone. And here's an example. Let's do this example. I have a destination that's one, one, zero, 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 one. And I or it with a zero, 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 one, 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 one. That means I'm going to set these five bits of the destination and I will leave these three bits as they are. So the result of this will be the lower five bits are going to be set no matter what. The upper three will just remain their same values. No impact. Okay. Let's try that. Okay. So let's go back to the debugger and we'll go ahead and stop this. And we'll go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to do a test case where I move dot B and let's look at our example here that we're working on and get that over there there stay and then what I want to do is I'm going to move my test value destinations of one 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 two and then one two three four binary into our eight since we haven't used it and then I want to do move or I'm going to and dot b with a mask in my mask right or excuse me I use the wrong thing it's or so I'm going to or that with one two three one two three four five binary and then I'm going to do R8. So I'm going to I'm going to set the lower five bits and I'm going to leave the upper three bits alone. So this is going to be set bits four to zero. OK. All right. Bit position four to zero. Let's go ahead and fire that up. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Everybody's happy. Everybody's loading. Having a good time. Good. <laughs> Now, here we go. I'm going to come down here and let's go ahead and move our breakpoint over here. And I'm going to put this dude right here. And so I'll go ahead and run down. And I care about our eight right now. So let's move that into uh, binary. And I'll go ahead and scroll over there. So let's do a step and move in our test destination. So I have, here's my destination. So I have one, one, and then zero, 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 one. So that's what I have here. And I am going to or it with this mask, and I'm gonna set the lower five bits. So watch R8 here as I step and do this OR. Boom, <laughs> set them all, that's awesome. Okay, now you're like, hey, what, can, what else can we do? Oh, well, I can do one more thing, and that is the XOR. Check out the XOR, what does it do? If you exclusive OR anything with a one, it will actually toggle the value. So a zero becomes a one, and a one becomes a zero. And again, if you talk, if you XOR the zero, the values stay the same. So zero becomes a zero, one becomes a one. I can use this to toggle various bits within a destination. So this example mask right here, if I did one, 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 zero, 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 it would take the upper four bits of the destination and actually complement them. So it's like a bitwise complement. So let's do this one. Let's do this example as we wrap this up. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do this. Go ahead and stop my session and <clears throat> come over here. And I'm going to do move.b. And then I will put this. We haven't used our nine yet, right? So let's uh, let's put 0101, 0101 binary into R9. And then here is now our XOR operation. I am going to do pound 11110000B and I'll toggle R9. And check this out. I mean, this is awesome. So I'm going to do one, 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 zero, zero, zero. I'm going to toggle the upper four bits. While we're doing it, let's go ahead and 
toggle, after I do that, go ahead and toggle the bottom four bits. Okay, all right, let's do it. So this is gonna be toggle, toggle. <laughs> ah. All right, here we go. Fire up our last debug session for this video. And, and <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that breakpoint. I'm gonna come down here, boom, put that at the beginning of that. I care about R9 here, so let's get R9. Let's put that in uh, binary, okay? And then I'm gonna come over here so I can see everything. There it is. I'm gonna load up my test number. Oh, no, I gotta run to it. I'm gonna go ahead and step. And here is my test. It's 01010101. Watch what happens when I do this XOR with 11110000. It is gonna to toggle the upper four bits of the destination. Boom. <laughs> Look at that. It worked. Now I'm gonna to toggle the lower four bits. Watch this. Watch R9 right there. <laughs> Boom. And that is bit masking. So those are the logic operations. And that's what you do with these bit masks. So that's it for this video. Uh, as always, remember to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date. See ya.